The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. You are all welcome to these teaching sessions. My names are Herman Mirel, teacher of the clothing industry. Today, I'm going to be your tutor on textile technology from five bespoke tailoring. Before we start to our lesson of today, we are going to look at the assignment I gave you people last week before we departed. So last week before leaving our class, an assignment was given to you people to go and look for two different fabrics. Fabric with a plain fabric and another fabric with motifs. And I believe all of you have done your assignment and you came up with your fabric. So all of us together, let us look at your fabric. So if you can look here, mine, this is what I came with, you will see that these are plain fabric. You see, there's no design, there's nothing here. And you look at the other side, you will see a fabric with motifs, okay? You see designs and some drawings there. That's what we call motifs. <laughs> So our lesson of today will be on printing. Before we start our lesson proper, I'm going to give you the plan of the lesson. We have the learning outcome, the previous knowledge, the real life situation, the presentation of lesson proper, the consolidation exercise, and also an assignment will be given to you people to take back home. Our learning outcome. At the end of this lesson, what do I expect from your people? What's our objectives? Okay, by the end of the lesson, you should be able to define printing. You should be able to name some textile printing methods, be able to explain the different textile printing methods, and also you should be able to do a simple printing on fabrics. Our previous knowledge, we have all seen fabrics with colors and motifs on them. So if you look back on our assignment I gave to you people last week, you will see that there were some fabrics with colors and there were some fabrics with motifs. Our real life situation. When we look around in our local market, we will find so many, many fabrics with different designs. Okay, they look so colorful and beautiful. And we also have the African print. Now it's now rampant, which vulgarly called the Ankara. Okay, so in our daily outfits, our daily wear, even in every part of the world, you will see people mixing the Ankara print with other fabric. So the question we ask ourselves this day is that, is it possible to print out a unique fabric that will stand for Cameroon traditional wrapper? Introduction, we will first start by defining printing. So what is printing? Printing is a process of decorating textile fabric by application of pigment, dyes, or other related material in the form of patterns. Printing can also be defined as a controlled placing of colors on defined areas. You can't study printing without looking at the earlier 
starts of printing, where does it originate? From our findings, we found out that the earlier form of printing was a wood block printing, which appeared in China. After which it spread in Korea, Japan, then in Persia and Russia. Block printing was developed in the Arabic Egypt during the 9th and 10th century. And we also found out that the block printing first came in Europe around 1,040 years before Jesus Christ. In our finding, we found out that the rotary printing, which is also a method of printing as the block wood printing, was invented by Richard March Hall in 1843 and later improved by William Bullock. So those are the origin, the start, the beginning of printing. Now we have been talking of printing. We are going to look on how it is done. But first, we'll look on how to prepare our fabric. Okay? We have to prepare our fabric before we can't print on them. So the fabric must be prepared for printing. Why do we prepare our fabric? So that it will have the affinity with the dyes, with the pigment, that it will absorb the pigment, okay? So if we don't prepare our fabric thoroughly, it will result to poor absorption of, of dye or pigment. So some treatment has to be given to our fabric, and some of these treatments are the scouring and the chlorinated treatment. So what is scoring? What do you mean that we, our fabric has to be scored? Scoring means that we treat our fabric in an alkaline bath solution. That is, we treat it in an alkaline bath solution like uh, the caustic soda or the ash soda, okay? And cotton and linen fabric should be given at least a scoring treatment. That is, if you want to print on the cotton or linen fabric, you should at least give it a scoring treatment so that it will result to very good fixation of the pigment. The next treatment is the chlorinated treatment. This treatment is mostly given to wool fabric because we know wool fabric is very, very difficult to print on. Okay, so a chlorinated treatment should be given on wool fabric and explain why we have to give this treatment so that we can obtain a good color hues okay and evenness that is it should be even that is the color should be even in all the fabric that's on place not that some places are more printed than others we have prepared our fabric our fabric is now ready to receive the print it's now ready to be printed on it's now ready to receive the pigment. So the next step is to look on how our printing paste has to be prepared. How do we prepare our printing paste? What do we need to prepare our printing paste? Okay, the printing paste, you can use a driven power mixer. That is, if you have a mixer home that is using current, you can use it to prepare your printing paste in in, in any other case, if you don't have it, it can also be done by hand. So if you don't have a power mixer, you can use your hand simply to prepare your printing paste. What are the reagents we need to make our printing paste? So to make our printing paste, we need the portion, which is the dyes. We need a urea sodium bicarbonate, sodium carbonate, and sodium alginate, which is the manutex. So I'm going to give you the quantity of reagent that we need to make 1,000 gram of printing paste. So to make 1,000 gram of printing paste, we need urea 30 gram, sodium bicarbonate 20 gram, sodium carbonate 2 gram, and 700 grams of 4% manutex stock. Method. What is the method in the preparation of our printing paste? The first step is to prepare our 4% stock of manutex. 
So how is it prepared? Our first percent stock of manutex is obtained by dissolving 40 grams of manutex in 1,000 milliliter of water. After that, we have to stir it, that we stir the mixture and we leave overnight until a smooth paste is formed. So to make up the paste, we have to dissolve now 30 grams of urea in 100 milliliter of water. We add now to this mixture above, that is the 30 gram of the urea and the 100 milliliter of water that we have mixed. We add in this mixture, 20 grams of sodium bicarbonate and 2 grams of sodium carbonate and we mix very well. Then we add this mixture to the 700 gram of the 4% manutex stock solution and we mix well until a smooth paste is formed. Now this mixture forms the basic printing paste and will be kept for several days in a sealed container, which means after your printing paste has been prepared, you put it in a sealed container and you preserve. You can keep it for several days, okay? Even months until when use arise. So before printing, immediately before you want to print, that's where you add now your portion dice and you mix well. So it's when you want to print before you start your printing, now that you add your dye, okay, on the, in the paste and you mix very well. I think now we have made our, we have prepared our printing paste. We have prepared our fabric. Now we are going to look at the different printing methods. We have four main, four main methods of textile printing. We have the block printing, the roller printing, the screen printing, and the heat transfer printing. What is a block printing? What is block printing? The block printing is a method of printing whereby the, the designs, okay, are first printed on a block. That is, you carve the design on a wooden block okay, or a solid pieces of wood. Now, the cloth to be printed is spread on a table, okay, which is tightly, we tie it with synthetic rubber. The color is applied evenly to the block and the pattern is stamped on the fabric to be printed. So this is block printing going on here. We say block printing is that type of printing whereby the designs are first carved on a wooden block. That is, you carve your design on the wooden block. You will see the designs are carved here. Now, after you have carved, your fabric is tied on a printing table, okay, with a plastic rubber. Because why do we put it that it will not stain, okay, so that it will not stain. And now, the next now is to be stamped. It's done by stamping. So you put your wooden block, you stamp on your print on your paste and you stamp on your fabric. So this is a block printing going on here. So you see that is by stamping. The roller printing. The roller printing is mostly used when you have to print very long runs of fabric. Okay, and printed with the same design. If you were to print a very long run of fabric, very long quantity, long run of fabric with the same design. So roller printing is the best technique used in that kind of printing. So how does roller printing operate? The designs are, are engraved on a copper roller. That is separate roller for each color. So if you have 10 colors, it means you will have 10 rollers. Okay, so the design are printed, they're engraved on a copper roller. And the roller are mounted ar around against a large cylinder, around which the fabric runs together with a resilient blanket and a protective back gray. I'm just going to read for you people. As we are going through the lesson, I will explain more so that you understand better. 
The printing space is located in a true. So just follow the reading. After I will explain technically what all this literature is all about. So a transfer roller runs partly immersed in the paste and in contact with engraved roller. A doctor blade scrapes away all the paste except for that contained in the engraving. A cleaning blade on the other side scrapes away any lint picked up from the fabric. And the pressure from the engraved roller against the fabric causes the design to be transferred. So this is all what I was explaining, all that literature I was reading, and I asked you people to follow the literature. This is all resumed in this diagram, okay? This is roller printing resumed in this diagram. We said our fabric is on a, you see this is a cylinder here, okay? And this is our fabric. And we have our bag gray and our blanket. What are they uses? Is to absorb the excess dyes, okay? This is our cylinder. And this is our throw that we said the dyes are located. This is the dyes here, inside here, the pigments. Okay, this is a transfer roller, and we said the transfer roller is partially immersed in the pigment is in this tool. Okay, in this color tool where the pigment is is partially immersed and is in contact with this roller, this engraved roller. This is the engraved roller here where our designs have been engraved. Okay, this is the engraved roller. What happens when this as is going? This one is immersed, that is, this transfer roller is immersed. It would, it is in contact with the engrave, which our design is on. So with the pressure as this is turning, the, the, the pigment is transferred here. And with the pressure, the designs are printed on our fabric. And this back gray and the blanket absorb the excess color, the excess pigment. And we said the doctor blade are there to scrape. Okay, this is how to scrape any lint. Any, any lint means that any small, small fiber that I found out, it will be smooth. Okay, these are the role of the doctor blades. I hope with this diagram, we all is resume how the, the print, the roller printing is, is done. I believe with this, we understand more better all the literature that have been set above. So this is an, a roller printing machine, okay? We said it's used to, to print long runs of fabric with the same design. So if you can see here, this is an example of a roller printing machine. The next printing method, we have the screen printing. So how does the screen printing operate? And we said the screen printing method is the most important method. Okay, with about 78% of total production. It means what we mostly use, the most used, is the screen printing method. So it can be done by hand, or you can do it in an automatic machine. Okay, so screen printing can be done by hand or by a machine. So how does it operate? First, in screen, in screen printing, as the name said, screen printing, which means you require screen. So we have to prepare a screen first, okay? A screen must be prepared. So how is a screen prepared? A screen must be prepared by number of sources. What do we need to prepare our screen? We need a wood, okay, or a metal, that is a frame of wood or a metal. We need a gauze. We know what is a gauze. That have, it must have some small, small hole like the gauze that they use in the hospital, in wounds. Okay, that has small, small, small holes. Transparent with small, small, tiny, tiny, tiny holes. Okay, and we said each screen require each color for each screen. So if you have 10 color, you have to prepare 10 screens. So how does it go about? The cloth to be printed is laid on a printing table. Okay, you pin it on a bag gray. You see that we are always using a bag gray because this permits the absorption of the extra pigment. Okay, so that it will not, it will not soil. 
the fabric. So our clothes should be laid on a printing table. Then our, a design is applied on the screen. We have prepared our screen and the design has been applied, have been carved, have been carved on, the, on that screen. Okay. And now the screen is placed over the fabric. All this literature will look, will see it on image and will understand the literature better. The print space now is poor on the screen edge and spread with squeeze. That is when you pour now, you start spread it. Or uh, you spread it over the surface of the screen. So the diner will penetrate, will push through through those open parts of our girls. Okay. So as we as we do the movement, the, the dyes, the pigment are pushed through. Now, after that, you remove the screen and you repeat the process. This is as you are doing it manually, okay? You said you can be done by hand or by machine. So when you are doing it manually, that's how you do, you do it. So you push with your hands. After that, you remove the screen. If there's another color, you use another screen for another color. Remember we said each screen for each color. So if you can look here, yeah, this is a hand Printing. He's doing a hand screen printing. Yeah, the printing here is done by hand. All the literature was explaining. This is our screen. You see? You see the frame, right? This green particle that you are seeing here is the girls. Okay? And you see the dye, the pigment is applied. This is our printing table. Under this frame, there's the fabric. Okay? And you see now the dyes have been applied and you see the movement he's doing. He's squeezing the dye. So this is a screen printing going on manually. Example of screen printing. We have two main type of screen printing. We have the flat screen printing, as you can see here. Look, this is a flat screen printing. It's like the one that we just saw. This one, but this one was done manually, okay? It was done by hand. But this next one, you see now, this is done by machine, so it's automatic. Okay, you see these are the screens. This is the first screen, this is the second screen. And every screen has its color. You see this color, and you see the fabric going through. As it passes through this screen, you see it takes the color, and it comes here, it takes the design. At the end, this is the end that we have. So this is our printed fabric, okay? So this is a flat screen printing going on. I believe with this image, you understand the process very well. The next time of screen printing is the rotary screen printing. This is another type of screen printing. Okay, this, in this rotary screen printing, you will see that the designs are engraved in the rollers. You see each roller here for each color and for each design. Okay, these are the ink. The ink are here. This is your fabric going through. So each roller with each color and each design. So as it passes through, right, it, the design, this one applies its own, is printed. The second one is printed. The third one is printed. And you see the final fabric here. So the difference with the screen, with the flat screen is that the designs are, are, they are engraved on rollers. Okay, the image are uh, engraved on rollers. So that's the difference between the, the flat screen printing and the rotary screen printing. The next method of printing is the heat transfer printing. What do we understand by heat transfer printing? How does it operate? In heat transfer printing, the, the designs are first printed on paper. Okay, you print your design on paper. That is, you, you draw your design on the paper, right? With carefully selected dyes because it's very delicate. And when you have drawn on paper, then you apply now on fabric. Okay, the design now are applied on fabric. So the design on the paper together with your fabric will go through a hot cylinder and it will be transferred through sublimation. This is what I'm explaining. This is a heat transfer. Firstly, your designs are on a paper, okay, with carefully selected dyes. 
After now, you put together your paper where your designs have been, have been printed first on your fabric. Okay, you put them together and you will go through a hot cylinder, you know, heat. Hot temperature will make the design to be transferred from the paper to the fabric through what? Through a process known as sublimation. So you can look at an image of a heat transfer uh, printing, like our t-shirt that we put on, okay? And this is a trans heat transfer uh, printing machine, okay? You see, as our t-shirt that we wear on is done by this method of printing. This is another example. You see, the design has been designed on a paper and transferred on a t-shirt. These are other printed fabric, okay? I'm just showing now how beautiful they are. These are printed fabrics. As we explain, this is a, a block printing, okay? You see this block printing going on here? I'm just, I just want us to, to recall what we said above. This is a transfer heat printing machine. So now at least we have, we, have, we, have, we have gone through our lesson and now we are going to do an exercise, okay, to see if uh, we have understood our lesson because this exercise will permit us to, to see if we have assimilated what we have learned during this session. First question, you, you are going to explain what is printing. The second question, you state some reagent needed to prepare a printing paste. For third question, state four printing methods. The fourth question, explain heat transfer printing. This will enable you to see if, if we have attained the objective we set at the beginning of the lesson. So we, 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 all of us together, we are going to give the answers. Okay, we are going to exercise that we we'll do together. So we are going to give the answer. First, we said, what is printing? What is printing? We said, printing is a controlled placing of colors on defined areas. The second question was, what are the reagents needed to make a printing paste? As we are going through the question, all of us, we are brainstorming, and all of us, we answer the question together. So the reagent needed, to make a printing paste, we have the manutex, we have the portion, MX, which is a dye, we have urea, we have a sodium bicarbonate, and sodium carbonate. A third question was, gave, so the four printing methods, okay, that we have just studied. The four main printing methods, we have the block printing, we have the roller printing, we have the screen printing, and we have the heat transfer printing. And our last exercise was to explain heat transfer printing. Okay, what do we understand? In a simple term, what is heat transfer printing? So heat transfer printing is a method whereby the designs are first printed on paper, then transfer on the fabric through a process known as sublimation. That's good. That said, we have come to the end of our lesson. And before we depart, as usual, an assignment will be given so as to prepare us for our next lesson. So the assignment is, with your knowledge on fabric coloration, state the difference between printing and dyeing. Some references that will help you to broaden your knowledge on textile technology in large and in the lesson of today in particular. That's come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will be on dying. <laughs> Unatege majang mategendom Manetambia ninya ne injubia yen Ngani bana matege mot Ngani la kiri wategendom Esa kina bia dinkido Manetambia ninya ne injubia yen Tam tama mote tam zabike 
Tem tama tonge, tem zabike, tem tem tama mote, tem zabike. Mane tambia ninyane, njubia yen. 